Good morning. Today is uh, Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. And this is a continuation of Math K3, Chapter 13. And we were doing Fourier series. And last time I did uh, the heat conduction problem with a one dimensional rod. And we had the boundary conditions, like the two ends, they were maintained at zero degree centigrade, the two temperatures, you know. So we had homogeneous boundary conditions. But in this case, I'm going to say that at x equal to zero and at x equal to L, we have a temperature of T1 and T2. So these are non-homogeneous boundary conditions. And the question is, how do you solve this problem? The homogeneous was pretty easy. So somehow, we have to consider, we have to change this problem in such a way so that <clears throat> these boundary conditions they become homogeneous that is anyway so that's what I've written here change to a homogeneous boundary condition and how we do that now we are saying that one end is maintained at T1 and the other end is maintained at T2 and you have some initial temperature profile inside it so, if you maintain these two temperatures, these two ends at two different temperatures, ultimately what will be the temperature distribution? It's going to come down, it's going to have, it's going to have a steady state profile, steady state profile such that at x equal to zero you have T1 and x equal to zero and you have a T2, you know. So as time, time tends to infinity, we expect a steady state temperature distribution in it. Because you are maintaining these two at constant temperatures, so you're going to have a uh, linear profile. <clears throat> so we say that Vx is by steady state temperature, that is t is equal to infinity, t equal to infinity, whatever be your initial conditions, the temperature is going to settle down it will have its own profile, which will be enforced by these two temperatures, you know. <clears throat> so we say that this Vx is your steady state temperature, and it's going to be independent of T, you know, because it's a T equal to T equal to infinity, that's where it's going to settle down, and it's going to be independent of the initial conditions and independent of time, you know. Now my heat conduction equation is alpha square uxx equal to ut. That's you know that's the basic heat conduction equation. And x is greater than zero in L, and this is for time t greater than zero. <clears throat> now because we are saying that Vx is the solution of this equation at time t is equal to infinity, steady state solution. It depends only on x. We have x and it's second derivative. So if I put it over here, that's why v, v double x, v double prime x, and because it is independent of t, so v of t is going to be zero. So this for steady state solution, v of x, that's my equation, that's my uh, heat conduction equation is v double prime x equals to zero. By the way, here double prime becomes the total derivative because the temperature depends only on one variable that is your x now. So what it means is d by dx of dv by dx equal to zero. Now ddx of some quantity is zero if dv by dx is a constant, you know. So I can write dv by dx equal to a constant and then I can, you know, take this dx on this side, I can say dv equal to c dx and then I can integrate both the sides, you know. So the integral of dv will be your v, and c dx integral will be your cx, and a is your integration of, uh, constant of in, in, in integration right here, v. So you have a linear profile, v equals to a plus cx, and that makes sense, you know. 
Now we know that at x equal to zero, the temperature is going to be T1. So at x equal to zero, V is your T1, so A is your T1. And at x equal to L, the temperature is T2. <clears throat> so T2, which is V at L, must be equal to A, which is your T1, C, X is L, and therefore C must be equal to T2 minus T1 divided by L. <clears throat> so if I substitute this A and C into this equation, I'm going to get V of X equals to T1 plus T2 minus T1 divided by LX. And that's pretty good, you know, if I put X equal to zero, I get my VX equal to T1, and that's what we want here. And if I have my X equal to L, then this, this cancels, and then the temperature is going to be T2, and that's what we want over there. So this is my long-term solution. So uh, what we say is that, well, I can divide by this problem. I can divide this problem. I can say that my U, which is my uh, the solution, actual solution of, we want to solve this differential equation. So that is the solution of this equation. That's what we want here. But we can say I can divide this thing into two parts. One is a steady state solution, and one is a transient solution. And as time goes to infinity, this transient, transient solution is going to die out, and we're going to be left only with this uh, V of X, you know, which is the steady state solution. So that makes sense. That's how we're going to write it. You know. <clears throat> so this is the steady state solution, and this is the transient solution. Now, I already know my V of X. So I don't have to solve for this. Now I want to solve for this one. So what I do is I'm going to put u of x equal to v of x plus w x t into this equation. And if I do that, I get alpha squared v of x plus w, which is a function of x and t, x x equal to v plus w um, differentiated with respect to t. Now, Vxx is going to be zero because it has only one x and second x, you know, it's uh, differential with respect to x the second time, that's going to make it equal to zero. So this term cancels out, so I'm going to have, I'm going to be left with alpha square Wxx equal to Wt because differential of V with respect to is zero, it's dependent only on x. You know. So basically now, I have this differential equation. I need to solve this differential equation to find my W. And if I know my W, I know my V, so I have my total solution over here. So I need to find this, uh, uh, find a solution to this equation. Now what are the boundary conditions related to this? I know the boundary condition is that U at x equal to zero, T must be equal to V0 plus W0T because that's what how we have defined it this way. So U0T must be equal to V0 plus W0 and this must the total thing, this thing must be equal to T1 because that's what my boundary condition over here is. And similarly, ULT, which is your T2, that must be equal to VL plus WLT, and that must be equal to T2. So from this, I can calculate my W0T, and that's going to be T1 minus U0T. Excuse me. Let me put it in what I'm saying here. So you have your W0T equals to T1 minus V0. That's what I have in this equation. And what is my V0? V0 is your T1. And therefore T1 minus T1 equal to 0. So W at x equal to 0 T is 0. And similarly, from this equation, WLT is equal to T2 minus VL. And ULT is nothing but T2, and VL is also T2. So T2 minus T2 equal to zero. So I have this other equation, I have WLT equal to zero. 
So both the boundary conditions now are homogeneous boundary conditions. That is, W at x equal to 0 is 0, and W at L equal to 0 is 0. How about my initial condition? The initial condition is that this total temperature, U x 0, is some given function f of x. You know. So again, I, I can write this guy as um, U. U is the summation of these two. I can write it V of x plus W x 0 must be equal to f of x. So w at t is equal to 0 is going to be fx minus vx, you know. So here I have, we have transformed the previous problem into a problem where we solve for this w. And this is the equation. And these are the homogeneous boundary conditions. And this is my modified initial condition. And this problem we have done right before, uh, in the lecture before. <clears throat> so the solution of this thing we have found, we have already done it before. And we found that this, the transient part, the W part, was a sine series, you know. <clears throat> With homogeneous condition, that was a sine series. So that's your WXT and from one to infinity, let me check the cap. <clears throat> All right. So we said, you know, it's going to be Cn e to the power minus n squared pi squared alpha squared t divided by l squared sine n pi x by l. That's my solution to this W problem, you know. And that we have just based on what we did last time. And to this, I can add my steady state solution to get my total solution over here. Now, how do I calculate my CN? Now, CN I'm going to calculate just like we did before. For CN, you know, you're going to use this. This is my this is my transit solution. And with the transient solution, the initial condition is wx0 equal to fx minus vx. So for a sine series, we know that the CNs are given by 2 by L, 0 to L, and this is your initial function, initial at time t equals 0, sine n by x, L by dx. But instead of simply writing fx over here, I'm going to use this guy, you know, because this is the transient solution now. The CN is associated with the transient solution, so we have to use this modified initial condition, and that's what I have used over here. So we have fx minus vx, and vx is given by t1 plus t2 minus t1 divided by L x, and you know, then you have the sine, sine n by x. So this problem is solved. Once I find my CN, I can substitute simply over here, and I have the total solution for this non-homogeneous boundary condition problem. <clears throat> and there is an example over here. It's the alpha has, has been taken as 1. So u x x equal to u t. And what needs to solve it from 0 to 30, so obviously the length of the rod is 30 centimeters. And the boundary conditions, the non-homogeneous boundary conditions are u at x equal to 0 is 20 degrees, and u at 30 centimeters, that's your 50 degree, uh, 50 centimeters, you know, at time t, equal, t greater than 0. And the initial temperature profile is initial temperature distribution is given by u x equal to x t 0 is given by this, you know, 60 minus twice x. So initially, you know, it has so at x equal to 0, the temperature is going to be 60 degrees over here. At x equal to 30, at the end of the bar, 30 is going to be 0. So that's in the green, you know, that's why I have it in green over here. So that is your initial temperature distribution. <clears throat> All right. So what is my steady state solution here? 
steady state solution, V0 is a 20, V0 is going to be 20, and V30 or VL is going to be a 50 here. So you just substitute into this equation, what is that equation? Right there. So T1 is 20, this equation, and T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is 50 minus 20, divided by L is 30X. So Vx is your 20 plus X. So this is the solution at time infinity. And this is the solution at time t is equal to zero. <clears throat> so this, this t equal to infinity, I've done it in red. It's a straight line. At x equal to zero, it's 20. It is here. And x equal to 30, it is 50, you know. So that's where the temperature settles down. It starts from here, and it's going to settle down over here. <clears throat> So I want you to do this thing as a homework problem. Yeah, and so I know my Vx, and we know that W at x equals zero is zero. If you put these substitutions just like we did before, and W30T is going to be zero for this problem, just like we did this one. And the modified initial condition will be for W, it will be x0 equal to ux0 minus vx. And ux0, ux0 is your 60 minus twice x minus vx. vx is 20 plus x, so that's your modified initial condition. So you just have to basically do the algebra, find your cn. And that's a homework problem that I want you to carry through and solve it. And it would be nice if you have some kind of a computer or something, you know, please plot it for various times. <clears throat> I haven't done it, I've just copied from the book. But you please make sure that it makes sense, you know, try to plot it. So that's what I did over here. So that's where plotted for t equal to 3, 3 equal to 25. So at 3 equal to t3, so that's where, it, this is it starts with, that's where it wants to be, and it is going there slowly over there, you know, you can see at t equal to 3, you know, it goes like that, t equal to 25, it's closer to this, and finally, you know, if you take number enough, uh, uh, go far enough in time, uh, I don't know how many terms they have been taken over here, n equal to 8 or 9 or 10 or whatever, all right, so that's how you solve this problem. Now, there are many large number of uh, boundary conditions you can have at the two ends, you know, um, and we are not going to do that over here. Now, the next problem that I'm going to consider is that the bar, the ends are insulated. And ends are insulated, so that's your bar over here. This end and this end, x equal to zero and x equal to L. Their insulation, insulated means there is no heat transfer. Let me just write T rather than U. This is zero. So basically, heat transfer is zero, and that means du by dx is zero. On here, du by dx is zero and x equal to zero, and x equal to L, also your du by dx is zero. So that's what insulation condition is. U of x at x equal to zero is zero, and u of x at x equal to L, at all time, it is also equal to zero. So this is our problem. F squared u x x, u t, equal to u t, u it is sub t, you know. X goes from zero to L, T greater than zero. And the initial condition is given to you that U of X equal to zero at T equal to zero is some function of X or some profile. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. And what is the boundary condition? The boundary conditions are homogeneous again. Instead of the, the actual temperature, now the gradient or the, um, the differential with respect to X 
at x equals 0 and x equal to L, that is 0. So, it is uh, just exactly what we did uh, in our very first uh, lecture. You know, you're going to use separation of variables. Let me just check this camera. Not bad. <clears throat> We're going to just follow the separation of variables where uxt is equal to capital X, which is a function of X, and capital D, which is a function of T. And just like before, you substitute these into this equation. And, you know, you will have x double prime plus lambda x equal to zero, and t prime plus alpha squared lambda t equal to zero. That's the two equations you're going to get, just like we did separation variables. And the boundary conditions are, again, that ux this time, not u, ux at zero, t equal to zero. And that means if I put u as a product of these two, I'm going to have x prime at 0 and t t because this differentiation, this is treated as a constant, you know. So either this is 0 or this is 0, but this cannot be 0 for all time. If this is 0 for all time, then your u is 0 for all time and that's a trivial solution and we don't want that. And therefore x prime 0 must be equal to 0. And exactly in the same way x prime l must also be equal to 0. So now these are these are the two boundary conditions. And we have done this this equation we have done before. What are the solutions of the two equations? The fundamental solutions are going to be cosine square root lambda x and sine square root lambda x. And now I'm not going to go into positive values and negative values and all those because that doesn't work, just this is what works, you know. <clears throat> so because these are the two, sine and cosine, they satisfy, they satisfy this equation right here. We're talking about this one right now. So if I put cosine equal to square root lambda x, it's going to satisfy this. If I put x equal to sine square root lambda x, again, it's going to satisfy this. And it's a linear equation homogeneous equation, so linear combination of the two will also satisfy this. A and B are just some constants, you know, and I'm going to drop these constants afterwards. So let's apply the boundary condition to the solution x prime 0 equal to 0. That's what we have over here. So x prime, so this will give you sine, and this will give you cosine. And cosine of 0 is 1, so this term will become 0. So you're going to have 0 equal to b multiplied by 1. So b must be equal to 0 if you apply this boundary condition. So if b equal to 0, that means you're left with this cosine square root of lambda x. You know. Your solution is cosine lambda x. And the second equation is that x cell prime x prime L must be equal to 0. So if I take the second, is the, if I take the derivative of this, this becomes sine. So I have sine square root, this is square root lambda by the way. So that was my solution. If I differentiate with respect to x, I get sine. And this is evaluated at x equal to L. So sine of square root, square root of lambda L, that must be equal to 0. That means lambda L, the square root of lambda L must be equal to n pi. Once again, n cannot be 0. Because if, anyway. So from this thing I can write lambda equals to n squared pi squared by l squared and n cannot be zero as we explained in the previous videos, you know.
So, the x part, the x-dependent solution is going to be cosine n pi x by lambda because square root of lambda is n pi by L and that's what I put over here and I've removed this constant sign, you know, we're going to put all the constant signs together and once again, you know, if you solve this equation as we have done before, exactly, you're going to get a decaying solution you're going to get t equals to e to the minus n squared pi squared alpha squared t by, uh, t by L just exactly as before now, so we started with, uh, we said that oh, our u is a combination, is a product of these two. So that means my solution, my fundamental solution is going to be e to the power minus n squared pi squared alpha squared t by l squared cosine multiplied by cosine n pi x by l, where n will be 1, 2, 3, so and so forth. But I'm just saying that, okay, this is one fundamental solution. Other solution I'm going to take as C0 by 2. I can just take. Why? Because each of these, we know that this satisfies this differential equation. And also it satisfies the boundary conditions, you know. No problem. And this is just a constant. If I put this constant over here, it's going to satisfy this heat conduction equation and because my boundary conditions they involve a derivative so it's going to satisfy the boundary conditions also you know. so a linear combination so both of them they satisfy they are the solutions of this and they satisfy the boundary conditions and we know the properties the linear homogeneous um, differential equations that if you have a bunch of solutions, you know, then a linear combination would also be a solution. So that's what I said. Each of these functions satisfies the differential equation and the boundary condition. All of them. Because both the differential equation and the boundary conditions are linear and homogeneous, any finite linear combination of the fundamental solutions satisfies these, you know, that is, that is also a solution. So I can write my final solution, I can write it as C0 by 2 because this definitely satisfies everything plus n1 to infinity cn e to the power minus n squared pi squared alpha squared t divided by L cosine n pi x by L. Now it will become much have become obvious to you why I want to add this thing. Now this cn is going to be determined by the initial condition. So at t equals 0, you have c0 by 2, and this side guy becomes 1, and you have cosine nx. Plus. 